Hello, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to install Python with Anaconda. So I'm on the website anaconda.com and as you can see, there's a lot of things that are going on uh, on this particular platform, right? So there is this Anaconda distribution, enterprise training, professional services, all of that, right? So we're going to focus on the Anaconda distribution, which is primarily free and uh, readily available for anybody who's pursuing a data science or a machine learning or a data scientist path. So let's go ahead and look at the download section. So if I click on download here, um, you're going to get a quick overview of all the platforms and the kind of most famous libraries are available here, right? So that's some of the things that you can just quickly get a glimpse of. And then when you move on, you're going to also see uh, the download section, right? So you have Python Anaconda, Python 3.7 version, uh, which the Anaconda will help us do it, right? But what you need to do is be able to select the right operating system for you to install on, right? So for example, if I select Windows, I'm going to get this Anaconda 2019-07 for Windows uh, installer, right? If you are a Mac OS user, you can select the Mac OS version. And if you're a Linux user, use the Linux installer, right? Just be careful with which, whichever uh, version you are trying to install. So I'm going to select on Windows since I'm, I'm on Windows and I, I have a 64-bit graphical installer. Um, I'm going to choose this because that's how my uh, operating system works. Now, if you do not have a 64-bit graphical, in, um, you know, 64-bit system, I uh, highly suggest uh, at least increasing your RAM to minimum 8 GB for it for Anaconda or Python to work properly. So uh, I have 16 GB RAM and uh, i7 processor, right? Um, and an NVIDIA graphic card, which should be sufficient for uh, any basic level of machine learning uh, things that we can do here. So I'm just going to click on the download button and let it download. Meanwhile, I can show you something about um, Anaconda Cloud libraries. So basically what this um, cloud library is, is it's a, it's a place where all your packages are present, right? So there's a lot of packages that uh, is supported by Anaconda and you can basically look for things within here, right? So for example, if I look for, let's say time series, right? And you'll be able to find uh, certain libraries that are available for time series, right? And some of them may not exactly be listed with the default Anaconda installation, but uh, you can come here and look for any of the additional Anaconda uh, packages that you want to install. So moving on, now I have downloaded it. So it's going to be there in the download section and I'm just, just going to double click it to start the installation. You can click on next, scroll the entire agreement, say I agree, say just me, and say next, and install it on the user path that you have there. So I'm just going to say next, and it requires 2 GB of space, but it can easily increase if you're inc having new packages and data sets coming in. So I'm going to say next, and I'm also going to add Anaconda to my path environment variable. Right, so that is something that uh, happens when you're basically trying to uh, add a lot of libraries or environment shift between environments and all that thing, um, which which can be done if you want, right? But uh, this, I used to do it early on, um, but now it's not required as much. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. You can just simply um, have a EXE version of Anaconda and then get the things done there, right? But here, uh, register uh, Anaconda to my default 3.7. That's what I want to choose and say install. So it's then going to install. And um, let's wait for a couple of seconds. So while that is downloading, 
what we can do is uh, come back to this particular information that we have here. So in this anaconda.org, uh, you can basically look for any packages that you want. Now, uh, the way to install this is uh, to take these name that you have here, that is R time series, and just use the conda install, right? So as you can see here, um, by default, the industry uses in Python generally a pip install, right? Um, so in in um, Anaconda world, it's going to be a conda install, right? Just because um, Anaconda has stitched together all of these components together, and it, and pip install may break uh, the the Anaconda installation of Python, right? So you want to stick to installing things with conda and uh, whatever are available on the conda install, they will be uh, present within this uh, website. So I'm going to paste this link, both of the links. I'm going to post it in the um, section below and you can have a look at it and um, act accordingly. The installation is still going on. So this portion uh, takes quite a while and if it's stuck for you, just wait for a while before uh, you can basically use it. So while this is uh, going on, what I can do is I can share with you uh, something that uh, we're going to use within Anaconda and it's going to be Jupyter Notebook. So to get a feel of it, you can basically Google free Jupyter Notebooks online and then click on the first link. I'm going to paste this link below also. So it's going to be jupyter.org try. So if you click on this link, try the classic notebook is what you're going to try or basically try Jupyter Lab, right? So any of these things you can try. So I'm just going to let's try the Jupyter Lab. Takes uh, some time to load, but once it's loaded, uh, you can start working on it. As you can see here, there's a lot of things uh, that are available. Uh, you have uh, binder, data, notebooks, a lot of things, which is going to be pretty similar view when uh, you have finished installing Anaconda and you have your local version of it. It takes some time to load, but as soon as it loads, uh, it's pretty good platform to experience it. All right, so the lab is a much more integrated view, right? But uh, what you can do is you can just cross this and basically this is the one that we'll be using, right? So you can add a new notebook and I can say Python 3, right? And say select. So basically now I have a notebook which I can start using um, and it's going to be quite similar to what Anaconda provides. I can do some things like three plus four and if I run it, it's going to give me an output. I can also say create a dictionary, right? Say one colon A, two, colon P and I basically have a dictionary sorry and say T and run it so I basically have a dictionary then I can load my libraries import pandas as PD I don't know if that is possible but let's see if it is yes it is possible I can convert a dictionary into data frame, say PD dot PD dot data frame and give it the dictionary and it's going to basically convert it. Okay, we might have to pass an index. And we basically have 
the data frame that you have here. So let's check on it. So that's what is going to happen. It's completed. So I'm just going to say next. And uh, it's going to ask you um, whether you want to install PyCharm ID and all that. So obviously, yes, uh, I want to install the PyCharm uh, also. So I can just click click on it and do uh, install it. But I'm just going to click on it and have it loaded there. I'm going to say next. I'm going to uncheck it and uncheck this and say finish. Right. So this basically installs Anaconda. Now Anaconda is uh, installed and I can basically go here and then launch it from this space. Right. So if you go. OK, it should be available somewhere here. Yeah, so that's the Anaconda Navigator. That's where you can begin it right now with Anaconda. You have a Jupyter notebook which you can launch directly, but primarily let's go with Anaconda Navigator. Okay, so I'm going to say it's, uh, I'm, yes, I would like to help improve Anaconda. If you want to, you can do that, or you can just say and check and say, okay, don't show this message again, which I will do. Right now, as soon as you install Anaconda, you're going to see a list of apps, which is quite similar to your mobile phone, where you have all different apps and all that thing. And some of them may be installed, some of them will not be installed. Right? Uh, we basically have the Jupyter notebook here, and the Jupyter lab that we saw uh, is what we had uh, in this part here. Right? This is the Jupyter lab that we we have. Right? So we primarily go with Jupyter notebooks because it's much more easy and simpler to um, while teaching and initially beginning with. So Jupyter Notebook is something that we'll be going at, right? Also applica applications on base. Now this route is what we will explore, right? So what does that mean? So if we go to the environment section, you'll see that you'll have a root section here, right? And by default, Anaconda installs uh, 273 packages for you directly, right? Now, which otherwise used to take a lot of time and all of them are installed for Data science, pretty much your pandas, your numpy, scikit-learn, all of these are installed by default, right? So you can just quickly start and get uh, get started. Also, you can create a new environment. Uh, let's say, for example, for web development, you are using it, and then you can choose a version that you want to create it, right? If you want R version, you can also create a R version and uh, create that environment, but um, you can work with both R and Python within this Anaconda environment itself, right? So that's something you can do. You can also replicate this particular version um, uh, and uh, have uh, another version of it um, just so that you can, um, whenever things ha do not break in one particular system, you can switch to other system and do it. You can also remove certain, certain parts of it. Also, uh, we have a learning section which has a lot of resources available for you to uh, experiment from and read from, right? There's a lot of videos that you can also see. And uh, I personally learned a lot from these places. So I highly recommend you check out this place uh, when for learning, right? It, it gives you a lot of things which otherwise might not be easy to find on Google itself. Then you have a community. Basically, you can join a lot of communities which give latest happenings within the industry and also they they give you a lot of ideas to use uh, Anaconda and Python for data science. So this uh, highly suggest some of the groups you can join and uh, you know be part of it uh, just to advance your knowledge in what's happening latest within the industry. Data science is always a constant it will add constant evolution so you need to be really connected with the learning platforms and community platforms to be basically gaining the max out of it. So I'm going to go back to the home and then launch the Jupyter Notebook. So when you say launch Jupyter Notebook, it's going to ask you where do you want to do it. So I'm just going to say Google Chrome for now. That's the app that I have and I'm going to say OK. And it's basically going to open the uh, platform for you. right? So here's where you can get uh, started off with. You have basically all the documents available with you 
here and this is basically pointing to the documents uh, folder uh, here right um, uh, uh, not exactly the documents folder but uh, primarily this particular folder where uh, you have your uh, you know um, your user settings and all that uh, let me just go to that and it's basically pointing to this particular folder so you can go into documents right and it's going to be pointing to the documents folder here right so whatever folder you create here um, let's say courses and if you come here and refresh it it's going to be available here right so that's something you can keep in mind and it's very helpful that you basically have your data sets and codes within the same folder to basically keep yourselves organized and um, you know um, use it to the maximum potential so yes so this is the getting started video guys um, so we've basically installed anaconda saw some versions of the jupyter notebook the free uh, one online we also saw anaconda cloud where you can get packages in case uh, they are not installed here right so, so one example i can just show you um, i can say just say open terminal and then you can just say conda install Install and then install a package that you want to right so for example let me say we basically want something like this which is a package yeah so this is basically a packages that's what you want right so you can say conda install conda forge r time series you just need to copy this and paste it here and then it's going to basically install it for you right so that's the usage of this particular part the open terminal and then you can install it from there anyways so that's it uh, this is what i had for this particular session i uh, will see you in another video with jupyter notebooks and pycharm thank you